exactly one week ago, a lot of different triggers and things came together in my life and I didn't feel so good. And I know so good still in the past that I couldn't set boundaries and I could not say no. And what happened when you do that in such a situation is that you slowly burn yourself out or do things with much less pleasure. And for me, this turned in the past into a big burnout and depression. But this time I was aware of it and I right away put out my boundaries. I said, okay, no, I'm stopping for a moment with everything that I'm doing. I'm taking time for myself. And in this video, I want to share how you can set healthy boundaries and start saying no. And I will share all the things that helped me in accomplishing this in the past and also in the present moment. Um, and I hope that they can also help you. This morning I was thinking it's so important to make this video because after my own burnout I met so many people that had the same issue as me, that couldn't set boundaries, that couldn't say no and also run into burnouts, depressions or just were very tired and uh, yeah, had problems with the issues that come when you don't say no. And why is it so important to set healthy boundaries? Well, in my own experience, um, if you don't, in your body will come friction. You will feel that you do something that's actually not meant to be or that you don't want to do. And because this happens, it costs immense energy. And this can lead to slow or slowly lead to a burnout or a burned out feeling, or you do things with much less pleasure. And I believe that in life, um, you should be able to set your own boundaries and say, this is healthy for me and this is not healthy for me. And also in a relationship, because I know it from my own relationship and also in a relationship wise, I've spoken to a lot of people that find it very hard to set boundaries. I believe that your partner or your friends also should respect it that you have your boundaries and that you uh, say sometimes no. And because you do, you will have more energy, you will be happier and actually you can contribute much better to that relationship. The beautiful thing when you want to change this is that we have much more power over our own reality than we quite often think. A big part of our reality we create with our thoughts and our feelings and we have learned them in one way or another in the past. And the same counts if we cannot set boundaries or say no. So it could be that our parents didn't do it or we were for a longer period in a situation where we were forced of doing something that we didn't enjoy and because of it we find it now also hard to say no. It could be a lot of things. But the beautiful thing about it is that we also have the choice to choose to create it anew and to learn something different. And it's just a process. So for me, for instance, it took a couple of years to uh, come better and better in it. But at one point, if you say a certain amount of times no, it's the next time much easier. Or when you become aware of your own boundaries, at one point it's much easier to right away say, okay, I went over it, okay, take a step back. Or quite often you don't even go over them anymore. And that's the beautiful thing that we can create it anew. So the first important question to ask yourself is, do you know what your boundaries actually are? I still know that till a couple of years back, I had no clue. So quite often it happened that someone asked me, Kun, do you want to do X or I? And right away it was yes. But actually right after, or maybe when I was doing it, I noticed that it was something that I absolutely didn't feel like, but I didn't uh, dare to say no anymore. So I thought, okay, I've, to, I've said yes now, and now I have to do it. And if this is the case, or if you don't feel that you know your own boundaries, I think it's very important to start to become aware of your own boundaries. And that means that you have to start noticing where your boundaries are. What you can do is keep a record 
when you for instance say yes or no and what kind of feeling it gives. What you can even do is take a little notebook with you and start writing down. So for instance, someone asks you uh, to do something and you right away say yes, or you feel later that it wasn't meant to be, or that you um, yeah, said yes to something what you actually would not like to do. You notice it or you write it down. You try not to blame yourself. It, that's so important. That's something that I really learned. In the beginning, I was always thinking then, why did I do that? Or uh, I should not have done that. But it is so important to just say then, okay, it's a learning moment. Okay, I said now, yes, maybe I do it. Or maybe I give that person a call that I don't do it. But okay, I do it. But I'm now aware that I actually went over my own boundaries. And when you know that and when you start feeling it and become aware of the feeling that it gives, in the future you will know much better when you went over your own boundary. So it's so uh, such a helpful tool to start noticing it for yourself. Another thing that helped me tremendously in getting to know my boundaries better was getting closer to my own feelings. And I used a lot of meditation for that. And especially meditations that are for the heart are very powerful because I believe that our heart can tell us very well what's right and wrong for us. For instance, I feel it now quite often uh, squeezing when something is not right for me. And by doing heart meditations or actually anything that brings you closer to your own feelings uh, can help. Because if you feel your feelings better, um, they will tell you much uh, better and also precise when something is not right for you. And then the last thing to get to know your boundaries better is to set a time out when someone asks you to do something or asks you if you want to do something. And that means that you just say, I have to think about it. And it's sometimes so helpful. And for me, this was really the game changer. If you Give yourself the permission and the time to just take some time for yourself, feel inside and feel what's right or wrong. It can be an hour, it can be a day. It doesn't really matter. But I knew for myself that I was not a primary reactor. So I didn't know right in the moment what was good for me. And when I knew that, I could just say, okay, I have to think about it. And then I could give a clear answer. And especially in my relationship, this helped so much. And my ex-girlfriend, she was very much primary. So she knew right away what was good. And I just didn't. So I just said, I have to think about it. She didn't take, take it personal because she knew that that was the way that I made my best decisions for me, but also for us both. And then I just came back to her. And I think it can help so much when you, just, when you give yourself that little time out. I would say that we also have just spoken about the first steps of setting the boundaries. Because when you know much better what your own boundaries are, it is also easier to act upon them. So when you start noticing what they are and it will become easier and easier to right away see when you go over them, it is much easier to act upon them. And it can even be that your body starts uh, saying when it's too much. And when you take the time out, you actually already set your first boundary. Because where you normally set right away yes, you just take that time for yourself and you actually put there already a boundary to know what is right for you. So I would really recommend trying to do that. And then the last thing that we already have spoken about was getting to know your feelings better. And this was for me not only uh, good in getting to know my own boundaries, but also of setting boundaries. Because when you get to know your uh, feelings better, and it can be by anything, it can be by meditation, yoga, or any other way, or for instance, a little bit mindfulness practice, you will start feeling your body better. And it means that your body will start telling you also better when you go over your boundary. And you will act upon it then as well. So for instance, what I see now by now is that my body literally gives bodily pain when I go over my boundary or do something that's really not good for me. And it can be a squeeze of my heart or my stomach squeezing. 
and it can be so intense that um, I had it. Um, I had it. It was already quite some time ago, a year ago, more or less. I said yes to something, and actually, I knew it was not good, but I didn't feel comfortable in saying no. So it gave me in that next 24 hours so much discomfort, and I felt so bad about my decision that I just called the next day and I said, "Look, sorry, but I cannot do it, and uh, you have to find someone else." And that is what it can bring if you come closer to your feelings. Then another thing that can help so much in setting and keeping boundaries is to letting go more and more of what other people think of you. I believe that we quite often say yes because of what other people think. And in my own experience, caring less about what other people think of me has made a huge difference in my life quality. And it doesn't mean that I don't think about if my actions are loving towards myself and the other. I would otherwise never do them. But the thing is, when I do something weird that I enjoy, I care less and less what other people think of it. A small example is, for instance, that I do these walking meditations in Amsterdam. And right in the middle, I stand by the canal with my hands on, the, uh, or my, my, with my hands on my heart. And in the beginning, I always opened my eyes and looked around. And you stand there for around 20 minutes. And after doing that a certain amount of times, I stand there now in deep meditation and it just doesn't matter anymore. And I enjoy doing it. And I think that this takes baby steps and we should be patient with ourselves. But the key in my own experience of letting go of what other people think of you has a lot to do with getting out of our comfort zone and just starting to do little weird, out of the comfort zone things. It could be something as easy as, for instance, whistling in um, the line by the supermarket. And I actually um, try to challenge myself quite a lot. So if I would notice that I find it uncomfortable to stand in line and whistle, I would just think, okay, I'm aware of it. I see that I find it uncomfortable, but I will still do it. Or um, Whatever, whatever small thing there is, but I would not right away start with going completely with something you cannot handle, but just small thing, things like making a little dance in the park. And then maybe you think it's weird, but what I've learned by now is that mostly people don't even watch. They sometimes shortly look and then um, they just walk on. And I did, I did this 30 day challenge where I did every day something out of my comfort zone. And you will just see when you go a little bit after out of the comfort zone and just do weird things that people actually are always um, busy with themselves. So they just look at you. They might think, oh, that's weird. But then they walk through and um, it and it helps tremendously because you will also easier say no and uh, set your boundaries because you let go more of what someone will think of it. Then I have one other method that I use a lot when I don't know if something's right for me or not. So this is a method where you ask your heart what is right. And what you literally do is you place your hands on your heart. You imagine you breathe in and out of your heart. You imagine that you fall from your head into your heart with your eyes closed. And then you literally imagine from your heart that you go the steps that are expected from you. So let's say someone asks you to go to uh, for dinner, but you don't know if it feels right or that you go over a border. You go and sit, you uh, imagine going to the restaurant, literally going out of your house every step and you see what happens. Quite often, you, you cannot even imagine stepping out of the door. Then you do the opposite. So for instance, you want to stay, can also imagine staying at home. So you do the same and you stay at home. It could be that then everything goes very smoothly. That means, in my opinion or in my own uh, experience, that that would be the better choice. Sometimes it's also the opposite of what I expect. Sometimes I'm just tired, but it would show that I would go to the restaurant and everything goes smooth and sitting at home would not work. And in my own experience, it already helped me quite often out to just go through these steps. Then teaching yourself to say no is another huge step. And if you set healthy boundaries, you will have to say no once in a while. 
I still remember so good that for me it was incredibly hard to say no and what helped me most was to start literally doing it. But also again with baby steps. So the thing is that I believe that the process is important, not how big the no is. So if for instance saying to your boss is a too big thing, don't start with it. Think about small things, maybe the neighbor asking you to help or maybe a good friend asking for dinner. Think on forehand about what's manageable and start with that. So start with very small things. In my own experience, when you start and you say more often no, it gets easier and easier. And another uh, thing that helps is also just friendly mentioning why not. So if you, for instance, say um, I cannot come for dinner or I don't feel like going for dinner because I have the feeling that it's better for me to take rest. I believe that most friends will respect that wish and will even want to support you in that you will feel good. So small baby steps. Then the second thing that can help here is to talk openly about it that you want to learn to set boundaries and say no. In my relationship, we talked about it, for instance, how it could grow our relationship. And people find it normally very nice where you want to grow and to develop yourself. And they will even support, uh, support you because they want you to be happy. And then the last thing is again the time out. Because when you take for a moment that time out, you will feel much easier if you should say yes or no. So by taking the time out, you will know the answer, but you still have to do it. The beautiful thing is that saying no is a skill that you can train and it becomes easier every time that you do it. I do have to say that I believe that for a lot of people, setting healthy boundaries and saying no is quite uncomfortable, but by you starting to do it, you also are an example for other people to do it as well. I hope that this video was helpful for you and that you can use the tips to set healthier boundaries and say easier no. If you liked the video, please like the video, write a comment or subscribe to my channel for future videos about the same topic. And I'm sending you all my love and wish you an amazing day.